I uh, want to talk about mental health. That's why I want to do in this segment, um, because it's something that I am coming to uh, coming to grips with and coming to terms with. Uh, it was only three years ago that I finally buckled down and told my doctor I needed help. And um, it, it came around the time that in the, in the the talk radio meltdown era where I actually put the show on uh, a a hiatus for um like an entire summer and during that time i i came to grips with things and and got the help that i uh, started the process towards getting the help that i needed uh, the thing that exacerbated it too that's my word of the day exacerbate um it sounds like <laughs> hey, mate jack exacerbates <laughs> what a cool guy <laughs> yeah. uh, i learned from grand theft auto san andreas that there was a word masticate or yeah. it was one of the Grand Theft Auto games, but the word masticate, and I didn't realize that was, uh, you know, eating. I'm a masticator. Um, can I just derail you for a second? Because you mentioned San Andreas. Yeah, yeah. I recently yeah. quoted uh, the entirety of Big Smoke's order to Stephanie. Oh, Jesus. And she just really? sort of looked at me and said, what is that from? And I said, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And she's like, why do you remember that? <laughs> because of me? <laughs> it was because of me, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't have the drop. Oh, I had it. I had it saved for a while, and I don't have it in here anymore. I'm, I, I'm a failure as a father and an inventor. <laughs> uh, that the is a human being. The thing that uh, kind of made me snap was it was May. Uh, I remember the exact date. It was May 18th, 2017, the day Chris Cornell died. Uh, and that was that, – that just – I mean – I love Soundgarden. I love Audio Slave. I love everything that Chris Cornell does. But that just like it hit me more than anything else ever had, and it was almost inexplicable why that affected me so much. But that was around the time that I said, "All right, I need to do something about this. I, I need I need to get some help." Uh, a few too many panic attacks too also uh, contributed to that. So um, I started taking this this drug whose name I can barely pronounce, but the way the, the way I describe it to people is since I started taking it, I realized I was in a, pretty much spent my entire life in a fog with a black cloud surrounding me. And ever since I started taking this stuff, it, it was like the clouds broke and I was seeing sun for the first time. Like I basically felt like someone who lives in Scotland. Um, uh, everything, I, I, everything was just clear. I just, I, didn't know what it was like to live with such a clear and, and ironically focused state of mind. Like I can actually pay attention to things now. I feel like I'm better at retaining information because I'm not just constantly distracted and constantly worrying about things. But at the same time, uh, the, the drugs just aren't enough. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Um, can you send that drug to me by the way, after the show, <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a couple of those called crack cocaine. That, nice. that good old white powder. Um, Cocaine's one hell of a drug. <laughs> I uh, I realize you know the the drugs simply aren't enough, and I just a couple of weeks ago started uh, going to therapy. Um, not uh, traditional therapy. It's it's obviously going to be tough right now with the way things are to oh, actually yeah. see a therapist in person. But I actually heard through a, uh, a podcast I, I listened to, Keith and the Girl, and one of their sponsors was a service called Talkspace. So I'm trying that out. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's obviously, it's like telehealth. Uh, you can do sessions over uh, video chat, um, but it's otherwise set up like Facebook Messenger. And it's very convenient. You just message your, you can match up with a therapist who's local to you, and then you can message them. You can send them a barrage of messages and then specify, you click a button to specify when you are ready for them to respond to you and follow up. And uh, it's it's early. I'm only a couple of weeks into it, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're hitting the stride now where, you know, I'm opening up about things and what's bothering me. And then when I'm especially not in a good frame of mind, I can reach out to her and, and tell her things aren't going well. Um, case in point, w what 
triggered me to decide that hey i want i want to talk about this during the next podcast especially with you guys because i'm pretty sure the three of us specifically are all fucked up to some degree oh god i could we could have a whole episode about how fucked up i am <laughs> but i think it's best not to i i specifically remember in in uh i think it was like 2007 ack it was it was when things were bad but i was like I didn't realize a it was okay to ask for help and b thought i was above needing help i remember asking you about like hey who do you who do you talk to about these things and you even said like hey i you know it's good that you're doing this i think it'll help like i think you were telling me hey you you have needed this the whole time um mm -hmm. now granted that was 2007 it literally took me about 10 years and some change to finally act on it but um you know i'm glad you said that and mm -hmm. um so this past oh uh, god what day was it? it was thursday oh man it just like everything i'm sitting here in the, in the studio because this is my work too uh as of late and during a conference call everything that could have gone wrong went wrong and it was sort of like a comedy of errors that just drove me over the edge fueled by some other personal issues that i have going on right now that i'm not going to go into detail over but i just had a fucking full-blown panic attack like i i at one point when these happen, I black out. Um, I don't remember, like, I can remember the things that lead up to it, and then there's always a, a small period of time that I just do not remember. Because next thing I know, right behind me, in front of that couch behind me, I was on the ground pretty much in the fetal position. Uh, and then oh. realizing, like, holy shit. That's a lot. Yeah. All right, I got to sign off work for the day. I'll see you guys, uh, I guess, Monday. So, mm -hmm. um you know thankfully i got you know good support system and my boss who told me hey you know take the time you need um but you know also <laughs> get, get some help why don't you uh which i'm doing and you know thankfully thanks to talkspace i was able to just send my therapist a wall of text explaining what happened and you know mm -hmm. what was going on so that's wh where i am right now because yay now i'm finally getting help now i'm finally talking to someone about it but um you know, the, especially with everything, like I said, there's personal issues I got going on right now. I won't go into detail over, but with the way the world is right now, that just is not helping things. Um, so I, this is one of those topics I just want to be candid and open about because, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a problem for a long time and I'm finally trying to do something about it and really get some help on it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's always going to be there. So, um, so, you know, I want to ask you guys some stuff and feel free to just open up about these things, too. Um, if you want, you know, obviously, if you don't, that's fine, too. Um, so assuming you guys actually do get help to some degree, when did you guys first start seeking help? One second. I just got to take my pills and then back up. <laughs> Fuck you for assuming I need help. Yeah, we're perfect. <laughs> we're beautiful. We have no problems at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome act probably just derailed his entire like schedule just to <laughs> wait until we were doing the show to do that <laughs> um do you want to take it first and sure okay. um yeah i mean i've been to me the the parts that i always was more okay with was the talking to therapists i i i've been i've seen i think four therapists throughout my life um, I've been seeing them since probably middle school or high school when I first started having, uh, unhealthy anger issues. Um, and I've had, uh, mixed luck with them. I remember my first was a very stern Russian man. I didn't really click with him. He was just sort of very quiet. We would have whole appointments where we would just sort of sit there awkwardly staring at each other. Because I wasn't someone who would, like, open up. I kind of needed to be pushed a bit more. Um, my second therapist was much, like, I went immediately from the first to the second because the first was not a good fit. Uh, second one was much better uh, for me personally. Um, you know, much more uh, warm and talkative and receptive, which, you know, I'm sure different things work for different people, but that tends to help me more. Uh, my third was when I was in college. Uh, it was one of the ones provided by my Catholic college. And he was pretty good, too. He asked me, like, the first session, he said, now, obviously, this is a Catholic university. I'm a Catholic myself. 
do you want me to mention God at all in these therapy sessions, or would you rather like zero percent? That sounds like any a reference of God. <laughs> and 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 I said I'm not religious. If we can leave God out of it, that'd be great. And yeah, I met him like four or five times, and we never talked about religion once. He was very professional. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and then my most recent therapist, about six ish years ago, back when I was still living in a out near Worcester before I moved closer to Boston, um, was very into new age, kind of like Eastern medicine. Oh boy. Like lots of like pressure points, acupuncture. Um, and that didn't do anything for me at all. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to say it's garbage or like every, it's entirely like fake. Maybe it works for some people. Like if it works for anyone listening to this, good for you. I, I'm sincerely glad to hear that. It didn't work for me at all. Were you actually um, doing the acu acupuncture? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And I mean, she made it sound like, I mean, there's a long history of, you know, and, and, you know, so it's not mumbo jumbo. It's not voodoo. There are actually pressure points that are connected to the wavelengths of your brain. And by activating, you know, certain places you can relieve stress and, but it, it didn't do enough for me. Um, and that was around the time where I finally was talked into actually trying medication. So I had been on, been going to therapy for many years on and off, but I'd always been like you were saying, like that, like that sort of feeling like you were above it. I, I, I had kind of been telling myself, my problems are at the end of the day, I'm a whiny little bitch and I need to grow up. And, and it kind of it took a lot of convincing before I was finally willing to consider the possibility that I was actually genuinely sick, like one gets a cold or one has the flu. And if you're if you have a headache and you take aspirin, that's not weakness. That's just common sense. Yeah, that's a good analogy. And it finally was, you know, I had a doctor who was able to tell me like you're not weak you're not giving up this is a real scientific cure for a real scientific illness you have um so he uh prescribed me um at first 50 milligrams of sertraline i don't know what it is here you've been taking jack uh, mine is sertraline yeah it's not that. um yeah yeah, uh, 50 milligrams wasn't quite enough. I didn't feel much of a difference. I tried it for a couple of weeks. He bumped me up to 100 milligrams, and I started sincerely feeling like a noticeable difference. And it's like you said about like the clouds starting to part. Is for me what started happening is I still have those spikes in anxiety, but they started to come less often. They started to be more manageable when they did come. So what was happening was I would have these anxiety filled moments of, oh, God, I'm a failure. I'm never going to amount to anything. I'm a burden on everyone. My life is meaningless. And it would be impossible for me to shake off these feelings myself. And they were just so constant and like several times a week, I would just be incapacitated with these feelings. And once the medicine started working, I started to notice like, wow, it's been like two or three weeks since the last time I had a thought like that. And then when the thought did come up, instead of crippling me for an entire day, I'd feel that way for 10 or 20 minutes and then start to go, this is fucking stupid. What the <laughs> hell am I thinking right now? It just started to become easier to move past these things. And I think the medicine, the medication really did help me, uh, sort of get my brain into the place it needed to be to fend off these negative thoughts. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that. Um, I, especially from the anxiety viewpoint, there were a lot of times where I would get worked up and anxious about just the, what would it be like the most trivial thing? And <laughs> finally getting that under control i'm not worried about that stuff anymore the thing that got it for me was just going into a new position at work that entailed a lot of responsibility and doing a lot of things i'd never done before that were out of my comfort zone but at the same time it was one of those things where like hey i need to now be comfortable doing this and i need to get over it so uh, yeah. you know actually 
you know, taking something that quells that anxiety uh, was a godsend. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I can relate to, to all that there. Um, I wish it was just as easy for me as it is for you to say like, Hey, after 20 minutes, brushing off that, those thoughts and mm -hmm. moving on. It's that, that, that part is not as uh, easy for me. And that's actually something that right. me and my, uh, therapist are working on right now. I mean, that's come with years of meeting with people and, and, you know, I've been on this medication for like six years now. So, I mean, it's something that it is going to take time, you know, and you gotta, the, the important thing, I think the real distinction is some people don't ever want to take those steps because it involves admitting, you know, I have a problem mm -hmm. and I need help. And that's something a lot of people can't do. So once you've reached the point where you're able to say, I'll try anything. I hate the way I am right now. I want to be better. And you start thinking like, yeah, you got ideas, throw them at me. I will try them. I think that's once you're in that mindset, it's going to be, it's going to get easier from there. Yeah. And that's, that's the weird part about what you just said is a lot of people have that feeling of like, Oh, they're, I don't want to be blah, blah, blah. But the point is, is most people have some sort of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Every, like, it's just, it's part of life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, An anxious world out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Things, you know, said it before, I say it again. I'll keep saying it. Things out there are just not helping in the least. Um, and that's, that's part of the not. reason why I finally reached out to someone is it wasn't even just that. It was, you know, what it honestly was, it was me playing a game, playing an Xbox game and uh, throwing my uh, controller down in anger and then realizing, all right, this is not the uh, this is not mm -hmm. the way to do things. This is not the way to react. Yeah. Also, Mike just broke my controller. So now I need to now I need <laughs> to spend 70, 80 dollars on the Cyberpunk 2077 limited edition Xbox one controller. Oh, no. So, yeah, <laughs> um. this mental health problem brought to you by Project CD. <laughs> <laughs> uh nate how about you and did you uh finally realize that you needed help so okay i have a little bit of a long story but i'll try to make it as short as possible i've always had anxiety like i was in elementary school and i remember seeing an ambulance drive by and i would have a panic attack that my parents were in it so i've always had anxiety i think it's always changed though so I used to live in New Jersey and then I live, I moved up to Massachusetts right around the end of fifth grade. Um, and right around then it was like in the intermediate school area. So before the middle school. Right. So I had a teacher that wouldn't let me go out and uh, make friends because he kept me in supervisory because of made up reasons. Was it Josty? It was Jonas. Oh, okay. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Uh, I have no problem saying his name because fuck that guy. He <laughs> fucking ruined my life. <laughs> so long story short, I go to middle school and everybody thinks everybody has their little clicks like, oh, you're from the North Grafton. Oh, you're from the South Grafton. Who's this guy? Uh, he must be yours. No, he must be yours. So I had a really tough time making friends. And I got like into the habit of being anxious about friendship, which is explains why I'm so fucking weird all the time to people. Because like I, I try to be like, oh, I need to give you guys a gift to have your friendship. Or, you know, I have to do something to prove that I'm worth it to you. Um, so that was early um 2000s my mom was like you fucking need help <laughs> my mom was the one that was like you're gonna go see a therapist because <laughs> i think your mom's like was... fuck you you yeah. fucking fuck <laughs> no nah, she was it was it wasn't like that she was basically like let's try she's super supportive she's not she's great yeah yeah i just for oh, your the mom's sake awesome. of comedies yeah. and the lols hey she mom like, this uh this cat therapy session you took me to doesn't have any cats in it Wait a minute. <laughs> this is a trick. So they put me uh, into therapy, and it was really great. I found that I really like talking about my problems, mm -hmm. which then became a character trait. 
Um, they put me on Paxil, um, which was really great, really helpful. I gained a little bit of weight, but whatever. Um, I go up into high school where I'm like, you know what? I have been developing these skills. Maybe it's time to step off. Also worth noting that um, at the end of high school, Paxil changed. It went from being like whatever it was to generic version. And my mind, again, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional, so don't take my words. But to me, I was like, well, it's different. I'm not going to respond directly to that well because I've already decided that it's not going to work. And medication is great, but medication is only half of the battle. Mm -hmm. You got to do like the legwork yeah. mentally. So I said, you know what? I, I, I guess I'm going to have to come off of this because it's not working for me anymore. And I'm just going to have to see how it goes. I was. I was uh, practicing cognitive behavioral therapy, yep. which is awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm doing for those, right now. For those of you who don't know, it's basically training your brain to ask yourself questions about the way you're thinking as a means to like reverse your thinking habits. Like if you're like, man like my life is terrible and um it's never gonna get better you're like wait a minute am i using my feelings as facts like you can ask yourself so many questions so like train yourself to get into the the habit of it um so that helped then fast forward to semi recently i decided to quit my job of retail and do youtube because i was i was making enough money on youtube to support myself that i was like you know what i'm gonna be able to j take that jump and it was like i got to stay home i got to goof around all the time play video games whenever i want i was my own boss it was my dream job and i was still not happy and i was still anxious and like it bothered me. So I actually called up my therapist from when I was a kid and she was like, you know what? We just changed the rule. We are allowed to accept patients your age. Do you want to come in and talk? And I was like, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went in and have been talking ever. I'm still talking with her. So I've had the same therapist since I was like 10. Wow. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Nice. And um, it's been great. Um, however, I, I will say recently, YouTube just decided to say, boop. And that's, the, it, it decided you're not making money anymore. Like it just turned my monetization to off. Hmm. In the worst time it could possibly ever do that. So as of recently i haven't been able to talk about it because i don't know what to say about it yeah do you know why it, do you know why that happened it happened because they weren't happy with the videos that we were making um i don't need to really get into it but it's just it it's changed its policy a few times and yeah. um basically they just sent us a notice that said hey you're not able to monetize anymore um, we've, we've been worried about YouTube for a while. So we started a new channel called space bear comedy. Please subscribe because I might die. <laughs> um, no, we started that to kind of put things all on that channel. And mm -hmm. so basically I have a year to find out if this is going to work. So there's a lot of anxiety with that. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when your livelihood is literally on the line yeah. because of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a little bit tough. I've, I've been a little bit quiet with friends lately. Uh, I've been asked to do some shows with you and I said, Hey, I don't think I'm in a spot to really talk about because on top of that, I have the anxiety of saying things and people reacting poorly to them because 
it seems these days that if you have any sort of opinion, people jump on top of it and you're like, no, I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. Or so I've been scared to talk. So on top of losing everything that I've ever wanted, possibly that's, it's not, you know, I could be jumping to conclusions. I've been dealing with that. Cognitive behavioral therapy has definitely been helping. But I want to jump on board because you guys have kind of uh, inspired me to maybe try medication because as a comedian, you're scared to try to medicate because you're afraid you're going to lose your art. Like you're the thing that makes you funny because the way that I've been working lately is what's what what if blank like that's anxiety right but i started to be like what if i turned into a pizza and i use it as like comedy like you know like a yeah i use my what ifs as comedies and i've been afraid to try medication because um when uh a couple years ago i was put on two different medications it was like effexor and ativan and I turned into a fucking robot. Like, oh, yeah. Ativan will fuck you up. Well, it completely delete all of my emotions, which some might say, that sounds great. I would love to get rid of my emotions. It was horrible because you you need some level of emotion to go anywhere in life, mm-hmm. like to feel it's necessary to get out of bed, to dress appropriately for a job interview to you know open up certain relationships with people you need to have these these emotions i had none of it yeah. and adivan was also really awesome and it scared me how awesome it was because it was like basically like being drunk without any of like the dangers of it i was mm-hmm. like just super cozy super warm fuzzy and i was scared i was going to get addicted to it because with a lot of medications, there is a lot of dependency on it for yeah. some people. And I was scared that was going to be me. I was going to become dependent. So there's been a lot of anxieties with taking medications. But having you guys talk, having you guys talk about the benefits that you guys have had, the way you describe it as the fog lifting and the black clouds, like kind of makes it seem really fucking cool yeah (laughs) yeah and i mean i want to be clear i think based on what i've read i'm pretty lucky that the second dosage i got prescribed has worked so well for me i've read horror stories like what you've described of people getting ones that make them feel like they're not themselves anymore they feel like they're a zombie or it's a process what works for one person isn't going to work for someone else yeah. And sometimes it's going to take some trial and error before you find something that really you feel, okay, I feel better and whatever side effects they, there might be are worth it. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know? that's the hard part too, is because these drugs take a little bit of time to work, mm-hmm. like to fully set in. I think it was said like possibly a month. Maybe yeah. a month I was told weeks. for mine, it's about two weeks. Yeah. It's two not, weeks? it's definitely not that's immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, like, you, like yeah. I think you should do it. I mean, I know like and don't do Ativan. I know I know someone else who was on Ativan who who said the exact same thing. They turned into an emotionless robot and they were when they stopped taking it, yeah, things kind of went things kind of went south for them again because now they weren't medicating, but at the same time, they felt a lot better because now they actually could express emotion and they weren't they weren't just uh you know they weren't under that haze that out of van halen haze uh also um pete davidson from saturday night live you know don't be uh worried that you know you won't be able to perform without or, or while on medication pete davidson actually needs to be high to be able to function like he needs oh, yeah. he needs to smoke before he can do anything especially stand up especially anything related to his career because he otherwise just can't function and he won't be able to do he won't be able to perform. He won't be able to do anything that, that brings in the money. So 
I, I'm glad you brought that up because I also read an article that Bill Hader had a horrible experience with Saturday Night Live in his earlier years with anxiety until the point where he was like, I got to get help because he was saying like he was t- petrified. Like, mm-hmm. so, but he, he's a funny fucking guy. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. And just, but you're right. You're right. What you said, it's different. Every medication is different for everyone. So you got to try to see what works for you. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you have someone you can talk to as well. Even if you're not actually going to any therapist or anything like like that, just make sure you have someone you can reach out to who, who actually, uh, you know, will listen because Mm -hmm. that is what, you know, makes it tough for me is not having, not typically having a good, um, I guess, support system in that regard um it, it, it's just on on thursday when i i had my snafu i had a you know i, I bailed out of work early because of it but i still had a scheduled uh meeting with my boss that i had later in the afternoon so i i talked to her and i just like laid it out on the table and i'm glad i did because that really helped with mm-hmm. clearing my mind and also i i needed you know words of encouragement that i could only get from a you know a, a supervisor that i actually am happy to be under and work with so um you know make sure you have that good support system and also uh someone make sure whoever it is you're talking to doesn't tell you to just kill yourself <laughs> right because like yeah that's a good point when i was you know when i was younger you know you mentioned intermediate school right so that's like the fourth and, and fifth grade and i think that was around the time that things really started to hit the fan for me in that like issues that i have with my parents my mother especially those really started to take form and then you talked about that you know i name dropped that one teacher thinking it was that one guy because he was like Ack, you remember him shell-shocked vietnam yeah. war veteran i mean god rest his soul now but like the guy had some issues of his own and uh you know going to school dealing with that being under you know constant anxiety of the guy blowing up on me or anyone else and then going home to basically the same thing but you know in the form of my mother right like that's mm-hmm. that's not gonna help right and that, those aren't good support systems to have so yeah, it's it sucks too because what a lot of people don't have that like, um, like certain people in the South think that anxiety is the devil. <laughs> yeah. So it's just yeah. So I've been I've been very fortunate to have parents that have supported me and and I, I've it, but the friends part has always been difficult for me because. Because I have, I'm always anxious. I have, I have social anxiety. Oh, me too. Yeah. Severe, like you can remember so many of your shows where I'm like, I'm nervous. Like I was nervous doing your show all the time. And yeah, I'm nervous talking to people about things because I'm afraid that like, they're going to hate me. I'm scared of silence because like in a conversation, because I'm afraid that like that silence means you're bored or you're judging me or so it's been difficult to find the right people to talk to about it. Cause you're right. A lot of people don't know what to say. And honestly don't, you don't have to say anything. People with our situations aren't looking, aren't obviously going to you to fix them Mm -hmm. because you got to go to a professional for that. They're yeah. not looking for you to, they're just, some people are, and that's tough because you're like, I, I'm not a professional. So yeah, I don't know what to say to you saying. Like, like I feel I've, for you, Pally, but this is AA, you want AAA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. So <laughs> definitely having people that will listen and and yeah. hear you out is super helpful yeah indeed 